Hello, you're watching the Hub Online Network. My name is Gareth, and I'm joined by Deb Arnott of Community Futures. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, businesses and how we're going to get back into the workforce in Ashcroft. So, uh, Deb, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, and then we'll get into the uh, rest of it. Okay. I'm Deb Arnott, and I'm with Community Futures. I'm the general manager, and I've been there for little over 28 years. So I've seen a lot of ebbs and flows with our small businesses in our region, and I just feel privileged to have the opportunity to work with them as we transition once again. Uh, so how has, and of course we're gonna be talking about COVID-19 here, uh, how has uh, this pandemic affected uh, your area? And what is the area that your Community Futures covers specifically? Okay, our area is from Hope up to 70 Mile, including Little and Goldbridge area, and Logan Lake and Savannah. So a big region that we cover. And how, so, so then how has uh, COVID affected the business area of that large section of land? Well, you know, it's very interesting because when I'm working in the region, I've, I've kind of got two parts. We, of course, have still not recovered from the wildfire 2017, the business interruption. And I need to tell you, this was the year. This was the year we were all working up to, to have the best year ever. We were gonna have some revenues and get these feet back, these businesses back on their feet again. And now we have another business interruption. So working with those communities from Lytton North is quite different from the communities down in Hope area. Because during the wildfire, they really weren't affected like they were up here. If anything, they, were, they had the best year ever in 2017. So now all of a sudden, you know, I'm working with um, economic uh, response recovery from Hope and we actually were on a meeting yesterday to talk about the process of recovery and I think what we've gone through in the region with the wildfires and the transition, we're able to share those stories now and the best practices. So it's been very, very challenging as you can imagine because we've got a big area and so we can't do the same programming for each of the communities. Uh, so what is the decline, so since March 15th when COVID really sort of gripped its nails into us, um, what has been the decline in businesses up that route? Well, we've seen all the businesses. Everybody, I think, shut down because everybody had that fear factor. And it was like, okay, let's shut down, let's just stay away, let's figure out what we're going to do. Community Futures right away uh, deployed some programs. We knew that, okay, you're at home, we recognize that, but we have inventory on the shelves, we have services. Um, how are we going to get through this summer? So we did some partnerships with, um, you know, industries like Shopify, those kind of stuff, because we wanted our businesses to realize, yes, your, your doors are closed, but you still need to do business. We still need to continue on and whatever that might look like. So we're spending lots of time strategizing with each of the businesses. We do pulse checks each month. So in March, April, and we're doing a pulse check next week again with all of our business clients or loan clients to say, okay, so it's three months, where are we at now? How is the opening going? How can we support that? And of course, with the programs that are being announced by the prime minister, Community Futures was mentioned on April 18th at one of the um, announcements. So as of today, this morning, we started getting our documents. Um, everything's going to start moving forward to provide our sole proprietors with some funding so that they can get going. And I mean, a loan at 0% interest, like this is incredible. And it's given them to, till 2022 to pay this money's back. And if they can do that, they get 25 up to 25% forgiven. Like, this is, I think, something that they really needed. As Community Futures, we lobbied really hard saying, look, we need to have loans, but they need to be 0% interest rate. If we're going to be charging them interest rates, how is that actually helping the business get in their feet? Right now, they need that support. Um, they're not looking for handouts. They're just saying, okay, I need to continue my business, but now I have not had any revenues for months because as we know, depending on your business, it's over the winter. Well, that's probably the slowest time for our entire region for revenues. So we're looking at probably eight months that they really haven't seen a lot of revenue. 
So I think with this uh, new loan program that Community Futures is going to be delivering, and we're expecting to probably roll that out probably at the ne end of next week. And we're getting ready because we know that I'm getting calls every day. I'm getting emails. I'm even at different meetings. People are asking me, saying, so Deb, uh, when is this program getting rolled out? So obviously there is a need out there. And with Community Futures, we're so close to the ground. Like we're grassroots. We've been doing this a long, long time. We are engaged with our businesses. We're, uh, we're advocates for our businesses. Okay, this is where we need to be. I actually had an opportunity also to sit on a provincial uh, board and Western Diversification was at the table. And I was asked, okay, so Deb, if you had the top three things, what would you like to see as support? And keep in mind, this was, when was it? The end of March, I think I was invited to this. And I said, well, you know, with our experience with the wildfire and the transition, we need ambassadors. But we can't have ambassadors on the ground. We can't have them tapping on the doors that we did with the wildfire. So we need a hotline. We need a hotline where our businesses can not only check the website, and if they want, they can go online and do their applications. But in most cases, people want to talk to a warm body. So they employed that very quickly. So the feds and the province, they sat down and said, okay, so how can we initiate this? They did that partnership, and within a week and a half, they had that up and going, which I'm telling you, it just blew me away. The other, um, the other thing that I had mentioned was the zero interest loans. I said, you know, uh, Community Futures can provide loans, but we have interest rates, and we need to provide those interest rates because we don't receive any funding. So any funding we receive, we need to put back into the portfolio to keep it uh, circulating in our communities. So for the Prime Minister to do that announcement, because as Community Futures all across Canada, there's 268 of us. We were lobbying pretty hard and saying, this is what we need now. And this is a program that can't wait 18 to 22 months, which I need to tell you is the norm. For a program like this, you can count on 18 to 22 months. This is being done in weeks. So these programs that are getting rolled out is just absolutely amazing. I talked to the staff at the federal level and they're working hard, like they are pounding this hard. Um, they've been pulled from other departments to ensure that our small businesses are getting the support now. Because if we wait any longer, I'm finding that some businesses are even telling me that they're looking at downsizing now. Um, which, you know, I'm, I need to tell you, I'm a little grateful. I'd rather that than shut the doors. And I'm saying, okay, so if we're going to downsize, what, that, what is that going to look like? because I don't want these businesses to close. I've had some conversations with some businesses saying, I think I'm ready to sell, Deb. I don't think I can do another round of this. I'm exhausted. We've been doing this for three years and I don't have the energy. I'm lots of sleepless nights yet and I'm not feeling well anymore. So it's like, okay, so where are we gonna go from here? How are we gonna get your business prepared to sell? And for, for those that are looking at uh, purchasing a business and Community Futures, we also had that incredible program of great BC buy, buying a business that was going to be down at the uh, Vancouver Convention Center. And that was going to happen on October 3rd because that w that's what we've been hearing for the last three to four years from businesses saying we need to transition, but we also need to have that opportunity to sell the business. We've been working on this for months and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, okay, everything stops. So those businesses that we were working with to get them prepared to sell are now have their portfolios together and now they're like, okay, so who's gonna buy my business now? So I think there's a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs out there. Yes, it looks a little grim right now, but this is today. I really believe that it's going to shift. It really is going to shift. Uh, once everybody has that confidence again of going in the community, buying again, and that's going to take some time. Um, but I'm really confident that in the fall, we're going to see that shift happening. I'm very hopeful that we're not going to see another round of this. I think we're going to be better prepared when this does happen and getting our businesses, um, okay, so if this happens again, what can we do differently? so that it doesn't hit us so hard. And let's get prepared for that. So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of conversations going on, Gareth. I mean, at all levels, I, I try to share at local, regionally, provincially, federally, sharing the challenges that our small businesses are having because they need to hear it from the grassroots. 
Um, you know, it's, it's fine that you're sitting in your office and figuring, trying to figure out, okay, so what kind of support will small businesses need? For those of us on the ground that are listening to the stories, and sometimes I got to tell you, I feel like a counselor, and hearing those horrific stories and trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to shift this around? Because many people need to understand that these small businesses, it's also their livelihood. They also have a family at home. And I think sometimes people forget that, that, that not only their lives have been affected, but also their livelihood and the funding that comes in in order to pay their mortgage and put food on the table for their family. So they, they got a double whammy here and they're going through a very, very difficult time. One of the things that um, I've been following about this, uh, the 0% the loan is uh, I listen to CBC a lot. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the people that they talk to are saying that the loan's all well and good but that just puts their business more in debt and they're looking at large, um, even though it's 0%, uh, still having to pay back $220,000, let's say, uh, to keep paying their employees, to keep bringing in stock, uh, et cetera, that they would normally have income from. Um, they're saying it's gonna be impossible to pay that loan off. Uh, what is the benefits of giving a loan versus the government giving a bailout to every business? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And there, in my in my humble opinion, I don't really think there should be bailouts. Um, businesses, I, I think sometimes they're underestimated. Um, entrepreneurs are very, very clever. They're very creative. They, you know, if you sit down with them and talk about, okay, so where do you see yourself in, you know, one to five years? It's not always the loans that they're looking for. They might need some uh, support with strategizing and shifting and pivoting their business and helping them understand that the landscape is never going to be the same again. So, so let's look at your assets. What can we do differently? And I need to tell you, it's not always money. Many of the businesses I talk to, um, depending on their situation and their financial situation, I'll say, you know, the loan isn't going to pull you out of this one. So why would we put you in more debt? Because as Community Futures, we're looking more of their strategy, their business plan and their feasibility. I mean, yeah, we look at security, but we're very, very different from financial institutions. We're looking at, okay, so what can we do to ensure that you're going to be successful? And like I said, it's not always money, Gareth. Uh, another, so the federal government has done things like the CERB and other uh, things like that for businesses as well. And when they started a lot of these programs, it starts with one idea and they said, here's the idea, run with it, to try and get money out the door to people that need it. Yeah. Um, in this instance, and, and uh, sorry, and then the CRB, of course, has made a lot of changes yeah. uh, to it. So is this business uh, plan that is put in place by the provincial government going to have a lot of changes moving forward as uh, more understanding of what businesses need uh, come forth? Or is it, uh, here's the plan, it's a solid plan, that's it? Well, I need to tell you, I need to give kudos to the federal government because when they started rolling this out, and they rolled it out very, very quickly. And so you're going to see those different uh, bumps along the road. And then once you get the feedback from the small businesses, and I thought, good on them for recognizing, saying, well, you know what, let's amend this. Let's look at what is best for business. I mean, maybe they could have sat back and said, no, 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 this is a program, and either you fit it or you don't. They didn't do that, and they continue to listen to us as we're saying, you know, this is a great program, but this is where we're seeing the gaps, and we're able to provide that information because we're on the ground and we're hearing from the businesses saying, yeah, you know, we went, I went online, but I can't, I can't fit into that. It's like, okay, well, let's hear this. Um, we're very fortunate with MLA Taggart in our region because we can feed that information to her and she can then share it with her peers and the government and saying, this is what I'm hearing from our, our small businesses. So I'm really impressed with the federal government and how they have shifted some of those programs. They didn't stay steadfast and saying, no, 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 you gotta fit in there because there's no way that we can make it work for everybody. They've said, okay, how can we make it work for most businesses? So good for them. So the program that we're rolling out possibly next week, we don't know where that's gonna be. 
We really don't. I mean, we've had a look at some of the uh, guidelines. Some of that has been posted, but we haven't received the agreement yet from Western Diversification. So it's not until you get the agreement that you look at the details and figure out, okay, so how is this going to work? How can we work with the businesses to ensure that if they need to borrow this money, that they're going to be able to apply for the funding? Um, you mentioned being in contact with Jackie Taggart. Mm -hmm. um, have you been in contact with Brad Viss, our Member of Parliament at all? Yes, I just actually had a call with him the other day. Uh, we had a conversation. He actually called me um, in the afternoon and said, you know, Deb, what's the pulse in the community? What's happening with the businesses? So we had a very good uh, conversation and I shared some of the fears that I have, some of the things that are going on. And he said, thank you so much. And he said, if it's all right with you, I'd like to um, invite you to be a witness on one of our committees to share the program and how it's working in our rural communities. And I said, absolutely. I'd be happy to share and participate because at the end of the day, we need to all be sharing what is working well and where we need to fill the gaps. Otherwise, it's not going to work and we're all going to continue working in our silos. That hasn't worked for years. We need to sit around with stakeholders and figure out, okay, so what are you working on? Because I'd want, want to make sure I'm not overlapping with you, but I also want to share the great programs, what you're doing. And that's why I was really impressed with Small Business BC through that partnership with the feds and the province, because now individuals can phone and get the information for all levels of government, instead of having to get on the phone for the province, get on the phone for the feds. And as you know, that has been extremely difficult. People, I've heard stories where people are sitting there for three to four hours on hold for multiple days, still not getting through. So that uh, my understanding is the, the lines have opened up a little bit at the different levels of government because there's not that big rush anymore. People are now in the system. So I think it's going to kind of settle down a little bit for people. So, yeah. So let's bring it now to um, our area of Ashcroft Cash Creek. Uh, as, are there any, without naming any businesses or any names or anything like that, um, is there anyone that you feel is, is, is going to take advantage of any of these programs? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. There's no doubt um, because people have this assumption that most businesses are in debt. And... And when I look, work with small businesses, many of them, that's the last thing they want to be is in debt because I remind them all the time, the money you make, you want to put in your pocket. That's why you're doing this. This is why you're doing what you love. This is why you're working seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. You should be benefiting from that, not paying on loans. So we work with them very closely because, like I said, it's not about a loan that's going to assist them. It's about, okay, maybe they're going to need maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in order to pivot their business so that by 2022, they're going to be able to pay this off because they pivoted their business. They're going to see more revenues. And I need to tell you, they're very creative and looking at different ways of, okay, I, I think I need to shift this. I think I need to move this inventory out. And I think I'm going to look at my services a little bit differently. So, you know, I think that's great also. Um, that's a term that I've heard a couple of times in the last couple of days. Can you explain pivoting? I think for me, uh, when I look at pivoting, it's sitting down with the business and we're doing their strategic planning and kind of looking at, okay, so what's working and what isn't working? And sometimes when they're looking at their financial statements, they'll say, you know, Deb, what I'm finding is this portion of my business is taking up a lot of my time and I'm not making a lot of revenues for the work that I'm putting into this. However, when I look at the other portion of my business and the assets I have there, I'm seeing that I'm not putting in much time, but maybe if I put more time into that, I'm going to see more revenues. So it's kind of like, okay, so let's just shift your business a bit. Let's pivot over and kind of let's focus on that area of your business that uh, many what I find also is many people start a business and they've got in mind, okay, this is the kind of businesses I'm going to do and this is what I love. And what I'll find is over, you know, eight to 10 months, you know, we touch base and how is it going? They say, you know what, Deb, I've discovered I'm really not enjoying this part of the business that I thought I would love. I'm not. I'm now looking at this part that I've discovered and I've taught myself and this is where I want to put my energy. I'm absolutely loving it. And I'm telling you, if a business really is loving what they're doing, they're going to make the money. They'll be fine. 
because they're so passionate and people feel that passion and they put everything into it and they're going to, they do whatever they can to ensure that it's successful. There are some things that are out of their control, um, you know, business interruptions out of their control, but I think individuals like that, it's pretty hard to take them down. They find another way of getting on their feet again and saying, okay, what am I gonna do now and how am I gonna shift this? And what kind of support do I need sitting around the table to feed this off of? And I think that's also really important for businesses because many are sitting in their businesses all by themselves. And many times they don't have anybody to talk to. So, you know, with Community Futures, they can call, it's all confidential and we talk through things because many people already have the idea. They just need to talk it out. And through that probing, we find that the more we probe, they, at the end of that conversation, they say, you know what? I think I'm gonna try this and we go, yeah, that's a great idea. And off they go and we say, how can we help you to get there? Um, how many, you, you said this earlier, but how many community future area, regions are there? There's 34 in BC alone and 268 across Canada. Um, so where does uh, our region fit in amongst the 238? Are we about average? Uh, meaning, um, since COVID has happened, um, there's been lots of different things in different provinces, and uh, I'm sure that rural and um, more city areas are different as well. But how does Ashcroft fit on the scale of we're doing well or we're doing... Uh, we really need the help. As community futures? As, as businesses in the, in the region. Oh, it's interesting. We're all going through this. And uh, that, I think, is the benefit of the Community Futures Network. We're able to move really quickly because uh, we're a very, very close team. We share everything. Um, if we find that uh, someone's done a program or they've developed some kind of template, it's automatically shared with everybody. Okay, everyone, I found this. I found this contact. I found this resource. Here you go. There's a contact information. We share everything. We, because part of it, too, is we're nonprofits. Our, our goal is to ensure that our small businesses and enterprising nonprofits get the support they need so that they're successful. That's our mandate. That's our goal. That's why we're in this. Uh, that's why when you walk into any Community Futures offices, we're pretty damn passionate about this stuff. We want to ensure our communities are successful, and that's why you will find, as Community Futures managers, many of us have been around for a very long time, because that's the culture. That's what we do. Do you have any um, highlighted pivoting stories of, of any local businesses? Look at Deb Tui at the Ashcroft Bakery. I actually sent her a note. She had, you know, with the bakery shutting down, um, I was watching, I tend to watch businesses. I follow Facebook. I have all of the business accounts and I like to watch and see what everybody's thinking. What are they doing? How are they moving forward? Because a lot of times I've, I might be aware of resources that I can private message and say, hey, I see this is what you're doing. Did you know that this program can assist you and it's free? So when Deb started uh, having those sales Thursday mornings and I sent her a note and I said, oh, this is a great idea, Deb. Well, she's got the contacts she's got her suppliers um she's been in this a long time like she when she did her youtubes which i thought was brilliant because many people were buying her products and then she thought hmm maybe i need to do youtubes to show them how to use my products at home because they're everybody's baking at home now everybody's um doing things that they didn't have the opportunity to do because their lives were just so crazy and everything just stopped we're kind of taking that breath right but uh, when she was doing her one YouTube, because I've been watching her, I've watched all her YouTubes, I, wa I watch every week what she's doing, where she's going with this. And she said, well, you know, I don't consider myself a professional baker. I'm thinking, what are you talking about there, girl? You've been doing this for over 22 years. I would call you a professional baker. Like, If, if you own a bakery, you're clearly a professional. If people are buying your baked goods. <laughs> I know, I know, right? And I was like, oh my goodness, girl. But you know, we all tend to do that too. And the other one is Pam Sidwell from Revelations. Oh yeah. She reached out very quickly and thought, hmm, I've got all this inventory sitting on my shelves. I can't provide the service, but I can provide the inventory because many of us weren't, well, I still, I've only left the community twice now. 
And many of us don't want to leave the community, so it was like, oh, so we send her a private message. She would deliver the products to our door. Like, it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So those are the two that I've been watching really closely because I've also been using their services. And I'm encouraging other businesses saying, watch what they're doing, pay attention, because they're not sitting back and trying to figure out, oh, what am I going to do here? How am I going to do this? They're moving quickly. They need to keep their profile. They need to keep their hits on their Facebook so that people know when they're opening. And I mean, also when Pam did that um, contest and anybody that was providing uh, for the food bank and they got their name in for draw for their haircut. Well, she was overwhelmed. It was just so great, right? It was like those people that were phoned, they thought they'd hit the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so good on them. Yeah, they've done a great job. Um, so now moving forward, now that uh, uh, restrictions are, are easing and that sort of thing, um, one of the main business sectors that seems that they don't know how they're going to quite reopen is restaurants. Yes. Um, do you have any insights on, on that particular industry? Well... I've been thinking a lot about this. Probably for the past week, I've been thinking, okay, how can we shift this for our small businesses that are in restaurants? Because part of it, when we're doing business plans and cash flows, it's on the seating in a business. Now we're cutting it in half. So now businesses are going, hmm, and I'm saying, well, we need to do a break even. We got to figure this out because if you need to purchase inventory, what's going to be the turnaround time for that inventory? because we can't leave it sitting on the shelves. And how many people can you move in and out when you're opened? But also, are they gonna have staff? I'm also hearing for, for some businesses where the people that were employed, they're not ready yet to come back. And it's for a number of reasons. It might be that they're, um, they're receiving EI, they have children at home, they're homeschooling now, um, they're afraid. They're not comfortable going out in the public yet. They, they don't want to be working in that kind of industry because, as you know, you see people coming and going and they're, they're not who, knowing who the clients are. So there are a number of factors. Um, I'm talking to some businesses and they're like, I want to open up, but I don't know what that's going to look like. Am I going to make any money? How big can my menu be? How many choices can I have? Because I can't carry all this inventory. So I'm hoping that uh, people will be patient and understand the challenges that they have. I mean, many have tried to do the takeout, but I think also with people at home, they're cooking more. That's another thing I've noticed. People are cooking and baking more and doing a lot of family things. So it's going to be, I think, a little bit more difficult getting people out into restaurants and feeling comfortable sitting in the restaurant. So like I said, it's working on that cash flow and doing that break even. How much inventory should you buy? Can, will you have staff? Um, interesting. Uh, the, the, again, on CBC, there's lots of different stories about uh, talking to different restaurant owners and that sort of thing. Because um, it's, uh, and right now, so, I'm going to back up a little bit. Last Friday, I had an eye appointment down at the coast. I'm coming home from uh, Mission, mm -hmm. and I probably passed 200 campers uh, coming up the canyon. So, you, you mentioned you don't know who the people are in the restaurants. That's really true. Despite the fact that people still should be staying home, mm -hmm. uh, people aren't staying home. Right? So... Uh, when you have a restaurant with half the amount of people and you don't know those people because they're not locals and you're a waitress, how close is a waitress allowed to get to the table? Exactly. Right? So, yeah, the, the, that's one industry that I'm interested in seeing how they move forward. And places like Unity in Ashcroft um, is so tight yep. in there. How do you have more than one or two people? I know. Right? So... Anyway. I know, it's going to be very interesting. Because also, they still have their bills coming in. Mm -hmm. They still have their leases. Um, they still have to cover all their costs. And yeah, they're getting quite anxious now. And that's, you know, when I talk to some individuals and I'm seeing depression. 
because it's been three months and well two and a half months but that's yeah. that's a long time that's a long time that feels Almost, like a year doesn't it yeah it feels yeah and for them to shut down and do something that they did seven days a week to stop that is quite a shift for someone both phys physically and mentally so now they're trying to figure out okay how do i even start up and trying to get their energy up again and pull them out of that uh, dark place that yeah it really sucks but let's try to figure this out let's how how can we turn this around and how are we going to partner maybe with other businesses and and try to make it work for everybody but there needs to be a lot more conversation because like I said, some businesses are still a little leery, and I don't blame them. None of us have the magic bullet, right? That's true. It's a trial and error thing here. Uh, based off of everything I've seen, Ashcroft seems to be in a, and Cash Creek seem to be relatively the, similar, despite the fact that people aren't going to restaurants as much, and some businesses are closed. Um, but when you look at places like Vancouver, that have bigger industries, yeah. um, I've, I was reading some articles about how Science World is talking about shutting down mm. um, places like the aquarium. Uh, and when I was reading these things, I, didn't, I never thought about, you know, you have to feed the animals still, even though there's nobody, there's nobody there. So uh, are you privy to any information based about those types of places? No, no. Um, just what, like what you read and listen to CBC radio, all of those kind of things. I spend probably 80% of my time with our region and with these small businesses, chatting with them and going back and forth and figuring that all out. Um, I'm working right now on an application for a Northern Development Initiative Trust, and I should have that application done probably by tomorrow afternoon, and that's going to be for a regional liaison person. And it's going to be very similar to the business ambassadors through the wildfire, very similar. And that's where I think our small businesses, where they need that support right now is to talk to somebody locally and say, okay, this is where I'm at. How can I move forward? Who should I call? Are you aware of any program that can help, help me move forward? And that's the kind of information they need. I find, and I even find when I go onto the websites, it's absolutely overwhelming. There is so much information and to navigate all of that. And if your mind isn't clear, it's going to be frustrating. And my fear is they're just going to close their laptop and walk away and go, I can't do this right now. So we need to have an individual that is actually working with them one on one and helping them through those processes. Someone that they can call and say, you know, I'm at this stage now. Can you help me get to the next stage? Because I don't even know where to start. So. I think it's that person is going to be very, very busy. I just watched what happened with the wildfire and we had the three ambassadors at that time. So this time we're only going to have the one person, but I'm just, I'd just be grateful for that one, one extra body in our office to assist those businesses. That being said, um, your office is currently closed. Well, it's closed. Well, it's not closed. It's closed to the public walking oh, okay. in. Okay. Um, and if people just knock on the door, and also I've had numerous Zoom meetings. Right. Whoever thought, right? I feel like I'm becoming an expert in Zoom. So even clients, you know, working through loans, I've witnessed through Zoom them signing the documents and having those conversations. It's all through Zoom. And, and I think sometimes they appreciate that because they're sitting at home and at least they're able to talk to somebody and we're able to discuss their business. And so that makes them feel a little bit better, like we're sitting across in the boardroom or something like that. But yeah, lots of Zoom meetings. Yeah. So you've been capable of keeping your staff working throughout this time. Yes. yes. Awesome. That was one of the things that when we looked at I, I, when all this happened, I sat back and went, okay, so what do I need to do to make sure that the staff still have a job? That's very, very important to me. We've got an incredible team there and great staff members. I wouldn't want to lose them. And I wouldn't want them to have any hardships at home. Um, do you have any other advice for small businesses? Um, not so much, I guess, advice. I would just say that there is support out there. There really is support out there. Um, we might not have all of the answers, and I've never professed to say that I'm the expert in everything. 
but we do have a big network. We've got a lot of contacts and they can call our office and we'll connect them. They, they need to know that there is a lifeline for them. So just give our office a call. And how can people get a hold of you? They can call our office at 250-453-9165. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you coming in, in our physically distanced uh, <laughs> space here. Um, we're about, what, 15 feet apart? Absolutely. Um, so very thank you very safe. much for your, for, for your time. And uh, we will hopefully get another update from you uh, in the near future. That would be great. Yeah, it'd be nice to do another check, say, in about July, August again, Gary. Sure, right See on. See how everybody's doing. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, again, thanks for being here. Okay.